Welcome back nerds, Fino here with a guide for Santa Karna. He's a free 4 star saber introduced in this year's Christmas event. And this brings us to the age old question, do you get what you pay for? Yes and more actually, but to what extent? The biggest sign of Karna's budget nature can be seen in his first skill, Footwork Santa. It's a 3 turn crit buff. Okay, good start, but it's also a quick hybrid buster buff that lasts for 3 hits. Hit-based offensive effects are always a bit of a downer since you can't just pop and forget, but it's an integral part of Karna's kit, so you may as well get accustomed to playing around it. If you're running with charge accelerators and you're gonna NP immediately, then you may as well use it right away. But if you're on a lower budget brawling setup or one with less free charge going around, like something with Hans, I'd recommend holding it until you get Karna's NP or a bunch of stars to make some crit plays with. Next up we have Flash Fist, a single turn buff to star absorption and quick critical damage that also comes with a 2 hit evade. Assuming you get a number greater than 1, hit-based defensive effects are actually pretty solid. Now you do have to worry about the trade-off between crit buffs and the evade, but you have a little wiggle room. If, say, you have the right cards to make an offensive play on the current turn, but the enemy is one turn away from getting a full NP bar, you can pop this to go aggro and gamble on Karna not getting double tapped. It's not even that bad of a gamble. Rounding out Karna's standard skill set is Hero of Benefaction, Holy Knight. It's a targeted battery capping at 20%, and it also comes with 3 applications of debuff immunity. Now you might be thinking of esports applications, but it actually advise against an esports Karna. This is his only supportive skill, and it unlocks last. So you'd have to worry about enemies not one-tapping him, he's gonna steal stars, and debuff immunity isn't nearly as critical as buff removal resistance. Which is a lot of what justifies the inconvenience of running someone like Santa Nightingale. That said, I can think of one case where a support Santa Karna would be valid. If you're using a trash tier self crippling farmer like Berserker Frankenstein, using this skill and swapping him out might salvage the situation. Damn bready Fran, then a faction is needed. In practical terms though, you'd be using this on Karna himself, either to prevent repeating debuffs or break bar debuffs, or for that 20% charge to get another NP going if you got decent face cards on the previous turn. Unfortunately, the charge being 20% means you can't combo it with a Zapen skill for a 50% up front. A lot of the time the starting charge CE you'd want to run Karna with is Traces of Christmas's Past, for its cocktail of relevant effects, but there is an alternate craft essence that has 60% starting charge. That would be Knights of Marines, a rare Summer 1 gotcha CE. In the unlikely event that you have a max limit broken copy and you're not in a fight where you'd prefer something like Black Grail for raw power, you can get an immediate NP off without committing either of your Scotty batteries. That said, I regret to inform you that Karna's first run doesn't include Servant Coins in the event shop, so odds are you'll have to wait two years for the rerun before this becomes a serious option. Now let's move on to Karna's Noble Phantasm, Winning Arkaputra. It's a single target quick attack that preemptively removes Guts and increases its quick performance, with the latter being tied to Overcharge. Now Guts removal is very niche. A lot of the time the really nasty Guts effects are box buffs, they're unremovable, and the ones that are removable tend to be small potatoes. Double tapping with face cards is a pretty easy alternative. I also want to point out that the most infamous gut spamming Lancer also has a multi-hit evade, something Karna doesn't have an answer to. You see, using Santa Karna has two dimensions to it. On the basic level, he's a class and a card type. A beat stick. Especially if you miss the Vegas Summer event, he's gonna be someone you just throw into a party if you need to tangle with a Lancer boss. As your account develops, you may acquire one or both Scotty variants, giving your attacks a lot more punch and giving you enough charge to nail your enemies with multiple NPs. If you have any affinity for Santa Karna or other quick attackers, they should be a high priority for you. The other dimension is figuring out what counter effects to pair him with. For instance, if your opponent is spamming Evasion or Invuln, you can run a command code like Fine Sword to get a quick card through. Alternatively, you can run Servants like Calamity Jane with a Star Dump or Sherlock with Kaleidoscope to donate that effect. Or even Sweet Crystal as your craft essence. If the boss spams buffs, then you can run the various buff removal codes to suppress their damage or defenses as needed. These two dimensions come together in restricted challenge quests. Sometimes they're exhibition quests like in the Neurofest equivalents, and other times they take the form of super recollection quests that run you up against extremely powered up versions of Lost Belt bosses. A common element in these super high difficulty fights is that they prevent you from running duplicate servants, meaning you can't run Saber Hokusai with your own Gastoria and a support Gastoria. However, Quick is in a unique position where they have two charge supports who do similar things, but these have different servant IDs, meaning you can run the Scotty system anyway. And in fact, Ruler Scotty's introduction is a big boon in general to Karna since she incorporates both an attack buff and a degree of buster support on top of her quick effects. Not only does Karna have a pair of buster cards in his deck and generates copious amounts of stars to use them with, but he even has a passive dedicated to buster crit damage. Another thing to note about these fights is that they often pit you against divine enemies, and this means you can pair Karna with another welfare servant, next year's Santa Martha, in order to give him a massive anti-divine buff to try and hit damage thresholds. Oh, if you're stuck with regular Scotty, I have two pieces of advice. 
Firstly, consider Gold and Sumo on Karna to get some kind of attack buff going. Secondly, try running your Scotties with Stardom CEs. It might seem counterintuitive given how he's a quick attacker, but because he has hit-based buffs, you really want to plan for the possibility of pulling both his quicks on turn 1. Now while Karn has plenty of potential and there's no excuse not to get him, he's got some pretty stiff competition in the Saber class. Firstly, as a general purpose Saber, Hokusai has a pretty big advantage. She naturally does more damage on her NP, and as an arts attacker, she gets better mileage out of Black Grail than he does. Secondly, there's a really good 3-star Quick Saber in the form of Julius Caesar. Not only does he have a solid skill set, but his NP does similar numbers. Only a thousand less after his strengthening. But if Caesar gets attack rocks during his NP, he can easily blow Karna out of the water. That said, Caesar has nothing in the way of protection, so keeping him alive in challenge quests can be... well, a challenge. Something to keep in mind. Karna doesn't necessarily punch above his weight class, but he does what you'd expect. He does damage, you effectively get him at NP5, and I think he's a decent platform for the various buffs, supports, and command codes that let you tailor your strategy to a specific fight. He gets the job done. Thanks for watching. Like if you found this video useful, subscribe for more, and come watch me at twitch.tv slash Tyson, where I stream every weekend, 3 p.m. Pacific time, Friday through Sunday. If you want to scope out Karna's competition, I have another guide on Saber Hokusai that you may find interesting. Till next time.